<clears throat> you know, and the reason why, you know, and I would say this as well, that if, you know, if you're in that, if a person is in that relationship where it's being delayed and there's already that commitment, it, you know, it's not a good idea to be in that situation for too long, even as fiancés, because the temptation is even greater to sin. You know, and um, even Ashton and I were talking about this. But, you know, often people, when a person starts dating their daughter or a son starts dating, that's when everyone's on high alert, right? It's like, oh, you know, they're starting this thing and then there's the chaperones and, you know, all, all these things that go into play, you know, where are you and everything like that. But do you find that almost like when people get engaged, though, it's like, oh, okay, they're engaged now and, and all, the, all, the, all the limitations come off and everyone takes a step back and it's like, oh, it's fine now. You know, they're engaged, so now they can be close and now they can spend a lot of time together. But it should be the opposite way around because generally when people are starting to date, they themselves are a bit cautious, you know, because they don't know each other. They don't know whether each other's going to commit and they're, they're, they're not going to push the boundary as far as when they get to know each other. It should be as they get to know each other better, especially when they're engaged, that's when they need to be very careful because that's when their guard is down, you know, and then you start reasoning in your own mind, well, we're going to get married anyway, so what does it matter if we kiss or if we hug? I mean, we're going to be doing that after the marriage date anyway. So there's a greater temptation to sin and to fornicate. So it should actually be the opposite way around. Like once people are engaged, that's when they need to be high, on high alert. Um, and if you do have to delay the wedding date for any reason and you are very serious with another person, I think it's wise at this time to not spend so much time together. You know, because the more time you spend together, the more chance there are you're going to do the things that you're not meant to be doing. And, you know, why not, why not make it something that both of you commit to in the sense that, hey, you know, we know we're going to get married, we want to stay pure, we want to please God, so we have an agreement of, hey, let's not see each other as often, or, you know, if we know we're really struggling, let's not see each other at all. You know, and let's just communicate via text or Facebook or whatever. And then when we, when we have our marriage, obviously you have to get together maybe to plan the wedding or whatever. I'm, I'm talking about the alone times where it's unaccounted for and, and where, where, the, where the sin actually happens. You know, if you're not seeing each other at all, it's just going to make the heart grow fonder, right? And you'll look forward to the wedding day even more. It'll be even more <laughs> a blessing to you if you can make that commitment. So if you do have to delay the wedding day, I think it's wise to limit your time together spend very little time together until your wedding day and you know replace that time with getting busy with with work or serving the lord you know go soul winning more often instead of uh, seeing each other as often and replace the time you spent together and it'll look you'll look more forward to your marriage i think as well to be a blessing to you <coughs> and it'll and it'll remove that temptation as well to sin <coughs>